Hey, it's Adam here. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I have several on garage doors. Some of them diagnose and go through several different issues that are really common and that could help you. And I suggest watching that as well if this is not your issue. Uh, in this video, we're going to be changing the chain, drive gear, and sprocket. So let me show you what the signs and symptoms are so you'll know if this is the problem you have. So one sign would be that you start hearing a lot of popping and grinding noises coming from the opener. Uh, maybe it's skipping, maybe it's not coming up all the way or closing all the way. Another thing you might notice is that your chain is sagging a lot. Now if you come up here, under here there is a gear and if you look at it from the side, you can see how crooked it is. It's tilted like that. Also you can see parts coming out. This bushing is worn. You see this debris, this little black stuff there. Okay, before we get inside, we want to make sure we have the power off, so I'm gonna unplug it here. Um, you don't wanna be messing around inside. So I'm gonna remove this. Now some models, if you drop it about that angle, you can pull it straight up. Some models, you can just take this housing off with these screws and just drop it down. Um, but this model's not like that. There's a, a screw here and on this side that we have to remove. Um, plus, if I take this off, it's easier filming, so I'm gonna be doing that. But remove these screws, there's four of them, one, two, three, four on both sides. And then here's a screw, here's a screw, and here's a screw down here. And a matching one on this side. So actually we have to take this cover off as well. Let's get this light bulb out of the way. Okay. Now there's this uh, kind of sticky tape here that might be trouble for you cause it to stick and uh, not want to come off so easy. So just pry that off. So taking a look inside, we can check the gears and look at what condition they're in. On the top of this one, see all that dark ground down material? That's all coming from this bushing up here. It all fell down and collected on there. Um, usually that means that your chain is too tight or the garage door is out of balance, things like that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. That's really important to uh, take care of that issue. You might have some lighter color shavings or something like that, but uh, we're gonna replace this whole piece here. This looks okay. This part here, this worm gear, needs to be greased up, but they're usually just fine. You usually don't have to replace that. So this is the kit that you'll wanna pick up. Um, sometimes, you'll find people just wanting to replace this one gear if that's what's wrong with yours. But usually the other parts are kind of worn out, so you might as well save yourself the headache and uh, replace the whole shaft because it's not that much more. And uh, chances are this is gonna go out sometime soon. Here's a replacement worm gear. And here's replacement uh, bushings and pins, things like that. Before we can remove this piece though, we wanna make sure we remember where the chain is so that we don't have to do a lot of adjustment later on the limit switches. Uh, that'll be a whole separate video on how to fine tune that. One method people have is, let me wipe off some grease here, is you can mark the chain. So now with these two marks, I'm gonna know that this is the position where the chain needs to line up to when I put everything back together. So if yours is closed like mine, then you can just pull this cord and it'll pop there and disengage this trolley from that catch there. Uh, if yours is open and you pull that and your door's not balanced, this whole thing could come crashing down. So you gotta be real careful of that. You, may, you might need uh, several people up there bracing the door, but watch out because uh, you know chances are your door is out of balance and the worse it is, um, the more dangerous it can be. So just be careful of that. Um, you can see the chain is connected to this piece of metal back here. So I'm gonna take some vice grips, lock it in place like that, and that will stop, not this part, but this part where this chain's connected to from moving and uh, getting the alignment out of whack. If you don't do that, you're gonna have to spend more time adjusting the limit. To get the chain off of the gear, we have to loosen these two nuts right here. I'll hold on to that one. I'll spin them in opposite directions. These are tight. There we go. Okay, that's plenty. 
I'll open up the garage, get a bit more light in here. And now that the chain is loose, we can take it off of this. So on the bottom is this little plastic clip and gear that's just gonna slip right off like that. Then we remove these three screws. This third one you can't use with a tool like this. You gotta use like a socket wrench or a little crescent wrench because it's uh, you can't fit this in there. It's five sixteenths. There we go. Now this whole part will just lift right up like that. So this is the new gear and these holes that we're going to put the screws in aren't tapped. There's no threads in there. So rather than struggle with it once it's in there, we're going to do it now. I'm going to take the screw, get it started like that. Drive it in and it's going to make threads. And so you do that on all three. It just makes it easier later. Now we got to remove this clip here and gear. We're going to put a lot of grease on this. You don't want to be stingy. We're also going to put grease down in this bushing, this lower bushing there. Make sure you get a good chunk in that one. And on this worm gear. Drop it in. Put some grease on this gear. Wiggle this one on. Next, we put the clip back on like that. And now these three screws, loosely at first, just to get them all lined up. Okay, now we'll put the chain back in place. You can see the mark there. So let's pull this back. It should stop where the grips are anyway. We're close to it. There we go. Before you tighten this up, look down the chain, make sure there's no twists in it. You want to get those out. So I'll hold on to this with some pliers, make sure that doesn't spin on me. And while you're tightening it, you'll see the sag go away in the chain. You want the chain to be about halfway or a little less than halfway on the bar. Any tighter than that and you risk uh, ruining it and snapping it again. There. So looking about halfway down the bar here, you can see that the chain's about halfway, a little bit less than halfway on the height of this. And that's where you want it. You want a little bit of a sag. You don't want it straight because it could break uh, the shaft again and you don't want it hidden here, that's uh, too loose. So somewhere just below halfway is where I like to do it. So the more this bolt gets threaded and pulled this way, the tighter the chain is. And you can take these off now. I'll put this little cover back on. And we'll button this thing up. In case you're a little confused, the screws with the rough threads, not the machine screws, but the ones with the rough threads, they're the ones that go into the bottom of this housing. Make sure that these wires are nice and secure. They're not coming out. And we can plug it in. Okay, so next I'll hit the wall switch. We'll see how it travels and if I need to adjust the limits, which I'll probably do a little bit.
that little nut and bolt is sticking out just to stop it from going too far. If we need to adjust it, we'll do so, but you don't want it hitting that and you don't want it going too far that way. So let's test it out. that was good it stopped in a nice place it didn't hit that bolt not too far so let's close it see how it goes All right, well that repair went pretty well. I didn't have any problems with it. I don't even think I need to adjust the limits, but I'm gonna double check those anyway. If you need to adjust the limits on yours, I got a video on how to do that, so check that out. It'll be in the video description, link to that. Also, before you do this, please check that your door is balanced because an imbalanced door, which uh, most garage doors are after a while, they get out of balance that causes this damage so that was probably why this was damaged so check the balance of your door fix it and then do this repair otherwise you might have to do this twice it's not worth it uh lots of other videos check them out on garage doors troubleshooting good luck guys i hope you can solve your problem and i hope you're not doing this in the winter seems like these always break in the winter take care guys i'll see you next time